Oh! A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Let's go, big fellow! Come on, Silver! Two men worked by lantern light in the tunnel that Jack Madison had abandoned. They worked secretly, just as they had on a score of other nights, deepening the side tunnel that opened from the main shaft. Now, wait a minute, Petey. Let's see what we got. Hey, that log looks different than the rest. What's it mean? Petey? It means we've got gold. Curse me. I knew all along that Jack Madison's vein hadn't run out. I knew we'd have struck the mother load if he'd kept going through the fault. Then we're rich. Can't sleep we're rich. Now, just a minute, Phoebe. Hey. Maybe you forget that this ain't our tunnel. It still belongs to Jack Madison. Uh, yes, that's so. But we'll buy it from him. That's what we'll do. We'll buy it. Hey, you'll suspect something if we try to buy it. Chances are he'll come here and look around, then he'll see where we've been working. Yes, maybe so. But it cover the work we've done, so he won't notice it. He won't do business with us anyway. Not after the way we cleaned him on that other deal. Well, it's worth a try. I happen to know he needs cash. He needs a bed. His father's a sick man. Jack wants to take him away from here. Go ahead and try. If Madison won't sell, I've got another plan. Maybe you better try that one first. I don't want to, Carsley. Why not? I've got nothing against Jack Madison. He's all right. I'd hate to see him put to death by torture. Torture? Indian torture. That's what my other plan will mean. I'll call on him first thing in the morning and see if he'll sell out. If he won't, well, one way or the other, Kyle's Lake, we're going to have this gold. Uh, here, Dad. Let me take those breakfast dishes. Thanks, Jack. I hate to be such a burden to you, boy. Oh, forget it. I never thought I'd see the day that Hickory Jim Madison would be too weak to get out of bed. You'll be all right, Dad. But just as soon as we get enough saved up to take you away from this country and Son. then... Son. Yeah? Don't talk so. I know how things stand. What do you mean? 
I know you don't get enough by panning the stream to do any more than buy grub. I know you can't get anything ahead, son. Don't try to fool me. Ah, the door. I'll see who it is. Hello, Madison. Peavy. You mind if I step in for a minute? You're not welcome in this house. And that goes double for me. Oh, now, just a minute. Please listen to me. But talk fast and get going. Well, it's about that deal we had. That property you bought for me in Cars Lake. What about it? Jack, I didn't know your blue streak mine had petered out. I, I didn't know you'd abandoned it. Oh. <laughs> you didn't, huh? No, I I thought you were getting rich on the blue streak. And when Carslake suggested that we unload some worthless land on you, I figured you could afford loss. What about it, Peavy? I didn't know we were taking every cent you had. Well, you know it now. Yep, and I, I'm downright sorry. I want to do something about it. And take back the land you sold us and return our cash. Well, I can't do that, Jack. I'd like to, but... But what? Well, you see, Carslake cares most of the cash, and... Well, he's not like me. He don't have a conscience. <laughs> I, I've got to get cash from him, and he'd never buy back the land we sold you. Oh, no, I reckon not. He knows it ain't worth a dime. And that's it, Mr. Madison. Uh, but here's something he don't know. He don't know how the blue street petered out. He thinks that mine is worth something. Now, uh, if you'd sell it cheap, I could get back all you lost. I, uh, I thought you and Carslake were pals. Oh, we are. And you're ready to double-cross him on our account? Jack eats my conscience. Listen, you scheming polecat, it's no gold. But Jack... I did business with you once, that was enough. You need cash, don't you? Rambles! <laughs> Wants to buy the blue streak, huh? Well, maybe I'd better have another look at that, too. Certainly. Do you think there's any chance that P.V. was sincere? If he was, he wouldn't have brought Carslake here with him. Is Carslake here? Yeah. I can see him through the window. P.V. has joined him over there next to the creek. No doubt at all, huh, P.V.? No. I didn't think you would. Carslake, are you sure you covered all the signs that, we, that we'd worked in the blue streak? Sure. Madison will probably go there to see why I wanted it. You said you had another plan. I have. It'll be mighty rough on Madison, but he had his chance. When Jack Madison investigated his Blue Streak mine, he found it just about as he had left it. All signs of recent digging had been removed. Carslake had been clever in concealing the work he had done with Peavy. During the next few days, Jack saw nothing of the schemers. He dismissed them from his mind and devoted all his time and energy to panning the nearby stream for a meager existence. He didn't know that his enemies had left the community to lay plans for his death by torture. Lone Ranger rode into a mountain camp near Spirit Valley. His nephew, 14-year-old Dan Reed, had been there since daybreak. Oh, hold on, hold on. Tommy, I'm glad you're here. You here? What happened, Dan? What makes you think anything happened? The expression on your face, for one thing. Who came here? How did you know? How did you know that someone was here? Well, if you look carefully, you can see the hoof marks of a horse, which I would say was black. I can see them now that you point them out, but... How did you know it was a black horse? <laughs> the horse brushed the trunk of that tree and left a few hairs on the bar. Sure enough. Who was here, Dan? Well, the man didn't give his name. He just left this with some instructions. Tobacco pouch? Yes, but look what's in it. What are those? You look at them. Gold. Nuggets of gold. Is it really gold? Yes, I'm sure of it, Dan. Golly, then he wasn't fooling. Strangers don't hand out this much gold without a very good reason. Well, I, I guess he had a good enough reason. What did the man look like? He looked sort... His looks were sort of against him. His eyes were kind of shifty, and he looked, well... Well, sort of mean and underhanded. What did he say? Why did he leave this gold with you? I'll tell you the whole story. He rode into camp and passed the time of day. 
Asked if he might fill his canteen at the spring. Told him to help himself. Then we got talking, and he asked which way we intended to travel. He seemed real pleased when I told him we expected to go east. Going east, huh? Uh, do you think he'll go as far as Oxbow? That's uh, about two days from here. Oh, I'm sure we'll go as far as that. Oh, by thunder, it must have been fate to put you in my path. Huh? And look here, son. If you do me a little favor, you can make a sick old man and his son the happiest pair of hombres on earth. How's that? Well, <clears throat> I'll tell you. Did you ever hear of Jack Madison? No. Well, he lives in Oxbow. Lives there with his father, who's a sick man. He's bedridden. Oxbow's in the gold hills, isn't it? Yep. And Jack Madison owned a likely-looking mine. I see. I thought he was rich. And I put over a crooked deal and took some money from him. I'm ashamed of it, son. I'm downright ashamed. And I want to make good what I done. You see, I didn't know that Madison's claim had petered out and that I took his last cent. Well... Golly, I don't see what I can do. Well, I'm getting to that, lad. I'm a rich man now. I, I don't look it, but it's true. I'm rich. I struck it rich in the Valley of the Spirits. Oh, that's right near here. Yep. I tried to give Jack Madison some cash, but, well, he wouldn't take it. Then I tried to tell him where he might strike gold, and he wouldn't listen. He's mighty proud. And on top of that, he... He hates me. Uh-huh. Now, here's what I want you to do. You take this sack of gold nuggets to Oxbow and give them to Jack Madison. Don't say nothing about me. All right. You can just say that an old friend sent them. Tell them there's a lot more where these came from in the Valley of the Spirits. You savvy? I guess so. I'm trusting you, son. Don't let me down. I'll never rest unless I know that Jack Madison and his old father are Nuggets. And he didn't give his name? No. Did he say where he was going? No. I wonder if he's telling the truth. Golly, it sounded like the truth. Why would he leave the gold if his story wasn't true? I don't know. But I think we'll check up on him. Saddle up, Dan. We're going to break camp? No. We'll ride into the valley and look around. The tunnel should be here pretty soon. We'll leave a message telling him where we've gone. All right. I'll get Victor saddled right away. I'll get some tools ready. There's gold in the valley of the spirits. I want to know about it. <laughs> I put it over, Kai's Lake. I put it over in good shape. I hope that kid's honest. Uh, that boy, say, he's as honest as the day is long. I can tell that by one look at him. Are you sure Jack Madison will head for the valley if he thinks there's gold to be found? Well, horses couldn't keep away. All right, then what? Then what? You mean to say you don't know what happens to anyone that starts digging in the Valley of the Spirits? What happens? He dies. With Jack dead, we can make a deal with the old man and buy the blue streak. Evie, listen to me. Eh? If you're basing this whole scheme on a superstition about the Valley of the Spirits... Superstition, my eye! That valley is an Indian burial ground. Redskins are on the watch day and night. They see anyone digging around there, disturbing the bones of the dead ones. They close in fast. Oh, I see. And it's a sure bet that Jack will go there. When he starts digging around, it's sure bet that he's, he's a dead pigeon. Oh, 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 oh. It's a sure a lonesome-looking valley, isn't it? Silly silver. <laughs> yes, it certainly is, Dan. This is the first time I've been here. I'll get the spades untied. We'll poke around right here where the ground's been recently turned. All right. Here's one of the spades. This doesn't look like gold-bearing ground. Maybe if we dig down a little. We'll try it. I... Look out! Golly, look! An arrow stuck right in that tree. That means Indians. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. The Lone Ranger didn't know that the Valley of the Spirits was an Indian burial ground. With Dan, he was just about to push a spade into newly turned earth when an arrow flashed in the sun and struck a nearby tree. Just a minute, Dan. I want to look at that arrow. There's something familiar about it. It sure hit hard. A strong man drew that bow. Uh, look it over, Dan. Oh, this is one of Tonto's arrows. Yes. How could anyone get one of Tonto's? Look over there. What? It's Tonto. But what's the matter with him? Why did he shoot that arrow at us? Then, if Tonto had shot that arrow at us, he'd have struck us. He doesn't miss the mark by several yards. Tonto! I... Kimo Sabe, me find message in camp. Well, why'd you shoot that arrow? Me see you ready to dig in ground. This sacred ground for Indian burial. Tonto, are you sure of that? Ah, oh, me plenty sure. Plenty Indian hidden on all sides. All Indian ready to make you prisoner when you put spade to ground. Oh, golly. Punishment. Death by torture. You shot the arrow to stop us. Ah. Uh, are the Indians watching us right now? That's right, Dan. Pato, is there any gold in this valley? No, no gold here. But that man said he'd found gold here. Man who say that, tell lie. Then the man I talked to didn't want to help J Jack Madison at all. He wanted him killed by the Indians. Then that man knew you, you were waiting in camp for someone. Yes, I told him that. Did you tell him about Pato or me? No, but... Then go ahead and do just what he asked. You mean... Take the gold to Jack Madison? Yes, Tonto will go with you. We'll play that crook's game and see how he expects to make a score. Gold. Dan, it is gold. Why, there's over a hundred dollars worth right here in a sack. Son, I, I can't believe it. Now, look here, Dan Reed. I want some facts. I've told you all that I can, Jack. The man wanted you to have that gold, and I promised to bring it to you. You can't tell me his name or what he looks like? I promise not to. Son, I've grub-staked a lot of men in my day. Maybe one of them is taking this way to repay me. Well, we can sure use this gold. You go into that valley and see about staking a claim? I, I don't know, Dad. I'll go with you. I'll show you the way. You stay here with your father, Jack. You go. Well, I... I'll think it over. Dan and Tonto stayed at the Madison house for the next two days. In that time, they won the confidence of Jack and his father. They became trusted friends. Convinced that Tonto would take good care of his invalid father, Jack packed a few essentials and started west with Dan Reed. Carslake and Peavy watched them ride out of the community. Looks like your scheme worked first rate, Peavy. Yeah, I knew it would. Well, what about the kid that's traveling with Jack? He's dealt himself a hand. He'll have to take what comes. How soon are we going to call on the old man? We've got to wait until he gets word that his son's been killed. Uh, it might be quite a while. We can afford to wait, Carslake. <laughs> we can afford to wait. One week went by, and nearly two days of the second week. Then at sunset, a tall stranger rode into town on a white stallion and asked how to reach the home of Jack Madison's father. Word of the stranger's arrival reached Peavy and Carslake in the cafe. Yeah, Peavy. He was real sober acting about it. Joe, did he say he'd found Jack Madison dead? Well, he didn't say so. But if it wasn't Jack's corpse that lay across the saddle wrapped in a blanket, what was it? You hear that, Carslake? Yeah. Poor Jack Madison. I'll never forget when he left here. He said he expected to come back a rich man. Yeah, the poor kid. Peavy, I'm sorry for Jack's father. This will hit him mighty hard. Maybe we should go call on the poor old man. That's a good idea, Carslake. Maybe we can do something for him. Maybe we can help him out in some way. Let's go to his place right away. It's you, Peavy. Madison, you're up and around. You feeling better? Yep. What do you want? Well, look here, Madison. Carslake and I want to talk to you. We heard that you... Uh, well, uh, have you heard from Jack? Well, I reckon you must have heard that my boy was brought home. Yeah, we did. Now, look here, Madison. 
Maybe this is a poor time to talk business, but and we've got to work fast. There's some newcomers in town, and I can unload that Blue Streak mine on them. Uh, what good is the Blue Streak? Well, the newcomers don't know it's worked out, see? Gosh, Lake and I want to return the cash we swindled you out of. Why don't you buy back that no-account land you sold me and my boy? There's no tunnel on that land, Madison. Now, the Blue Streak really looks like something. You want to buy it? Yes. You see, we can resell it right away. Yeah, but it, it ain't mine to sell. It... Jack. You're Jack's only living relative, aren't you? Yeah. Then the blue streak is yours. That is, unless your son made a will, giving the property to someone else. Oh, Jack never made a will. But even so, I don't know as I got the right to sell the blue streak. That's our worry. You mean you'd pay me the money and take the chance on me having the right to sell the property? Yes. Well, if that's all right with you, I reckon it's all right with me. Just so there's no misunderstanding. We need witnesses to the deal. Well, we'll go to town and get the sheriff and someone else for witnesses. Isn't it? While you're gone, I'll draw up the paper. Good. Well, we'll see you later, Madison. Yep, I'll be here. I hope I've done right. Good work, Madison. What? Great day. Who, who are you? That mask. I'm still the man who owns a horse in your barn. Oh, you heard what those polecats said? Yes. Only buzzards. They didn't wait long to pounce on Jack's property. I didn't know what to do about their offer. You said to hear them out and be agreeable. That's what I'd done. You did just right. When they come back with the cash and witnesses, you'll have a bill of sale all ready for them. Madison, I hope you know what you're doing. Oh, sure, Sheriff. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. He drew up the paper himself. Peavy, if you and Coslake try to swindle Madison like you oh, did last time. Yeah. I signed it. Uh, Sheriff, I guess it's up to you to sign right there as a witness, eh? Mind if I look it over first? No. Go ahead. It may not have a lot of the fancy legal wording, but I reckon it tells what I'm giving these men for what they're giving me. Yeah. I see. If that land's worthless, why do you two want to buy it for $1,500? That's our We affair. figured to resell it at a profit, that's all, Sheriff. I told him I wasn't sure I had any right to sell the Blue Streak. But they're willing to take a chance on that. Huh. Well, I reckon it's none of my affair. I'll sign as a witness. That's all I'm here for. Here, hurry up, Sheriff. I want to get out of here. There you are, Joe. Your turn to sign. This won't take Here's the cash, Madison. 1500 and there's your paper with all the names signed. Let's get out of here. I'll send the coroner, Madison. Thanks, Sheriff. There's your paper, Cosley. All signed and folded neat. Mm-hmm. If there's anything else we can do, you let us know. Yep. Well, good night, Madison. Good night. Good night, good night. Good night all. Lake went to the Blue Streak mine early the following morning. They went to work removing the worthless dirt they'd used to conceal their previous discovery. They shoveled furiously without pausing to rest. Sweat rolled down their faces. In the light of several lanterns, their eyes burned with eagerness to reach the mother load. Finally, Carslake threw down his spade. Oh, Dollar it, baby. Here's the load. Gold. Gold, Carslake, and it's ours. All ours. A fortune that's worth a cent. <laughs> Madison will be fit to be tied when he hears of this. We'll just tell him the deal accounted on fell through. So we decided to come, look the tunnel over, and found this load. That's it. <laughs> Maybe we'll give him a little more cash just to show how generous we are. Generous? Hey, what the... Look, he's mashed. Take it easy. You think you can steal I'm it? I'm not here to steal. Come in here, Jack. Now you get out of here. This is look, private... Look there. Jack Madison. No, no, it can't be. Madison, well, you're dead. Crook sure counted on me being dead, didn't you? Your plan didn't quite work out. You see, that masked man knew about Spirit Valley. We wondered why someone wanted Jack to go there to almost certain death. This man met me, told me about the valley, and we decided to see what you crooks were up to. You knew all along that there was gold in the Blue Street. You tricked us. You lied. You were told the truth. Jack Madison was beneath the blanket when I brought him into town. You were that man? Yes. And he's the one who fixed up the bill of sale. Well, there's just one thing we got to do to make everything just right. The Indians didn't get you, so I will. No! How about you, Peavy? You want to draw on us? No, no. no my no. arm, my arm's busted. Serves you right. Now get out of this tunnel and stay out. Now, just a minute. You're dead misrepresented, Steve. 
He sold us his tunnel and took our money. He didn't misrepresent a thing. He warned you that he might not have the right to sell the blue streak. He sure did. And you said you'd take a chance on that. Yes, and you did. agreed to take that chance. But, but we thought we well, were told that Jack was dead. You were told nothing of the kind. We just assumed that he was dead. You assumed it because you sent me to get killed. Now get out of my tunnel and stay out. Grab that one, Jack. You'll help him out. Come no, 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 on, Madison and the sheriff and several others are waiting outside. Peavy, you and Carslake got no leg to stand on. You bought and paid for the blue streak if Dad Madison had the right to sell it. You put it in writing that you'd forfeit the cash yeah. if it developed that Dad did not have the right to sell. But uh, we thought Jack was dead. What you thought don't matter. I've got some thoughts of my own. Yeah. Jack thinks you critters plotted his murder. You can't prove that. I thunder I can try. If you critters are smart, you'll take your loss and shut up. The Lone Ranger outsmarted but, you. Uh, That's all there is to it. it Lone Ranger... Is, is that who that masked man is? Yes. And he sure proved a friend. Uh, Peavy, we better do as the sheriff says. We better take our loss and set up. We're up against that kind of competition. We're out of our class. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. 